If you'd like a stronger, more effective, more confident one-handed backhand, then you've come to the right place, especially if you'd like it to look more like Roger Federer. We're gonna look at three different clips of Roger's backhand. The first one here, we're looking from directly in front of him, which is kind of a unique angle. The second one, we are to the right of Roger as he gets set up. And the final one, we're looking at an angle from the left. So my, my goal here was to pick a couple different clips so we can really get a holistic image of what he's doing with his body and why his swing is so effective and how you can copy that swing yourself no matter what your level is so you can hit a better backhand. So let's start off with his unit turn which is how he loads up his body and from this angle here looking directly at him and the camera is basically facing straight down the middle of the net uh, looking straight at him. The first thing we're going to look at is how much he turns his body. And so from this kind of unique, unique angle looking directly straight towards him, you can see here that we can see the entirety of his back. He's rotated well beyond perpendicular to the baseline, which is really key. And in my experience working with amateur tennis players, especially adult players, this is the first and most important thing that they tend to miss. A lot of players will get sideways to the baseline, but if you look at professional players like Roger, across the board, they're rotated beyond that. And it's really critical so you can use your body effectively. So that's the first thing I want to point out. Second thing I'd like to point out is his upper body is rotated more than his hips. You'll see that his hips are at about 90 degrees, while his torso and his, his core, his shoulders, are rotated substantially more than that. And so what that does is creates a little bit of a twist in his core, in his abdomen, so that there's additional load and there's kind of a stretching happening in his midsection, which he can then use to unwind and create really smooth, effortless power. So this is something that's really important as well. And let's look at a couple other uh, angles here. So this is from the left side. And you can see that from my perspective, kind of off the court and to the left, I'm looking directly at his back as he rotates it to face towards the camera. And from the right side, as he loads, you'll see he goes beyond perpendicular. And he's really kind of a, a trademark of this is kind of peeking over the dominant shoulder, which you really see clearly from this angle here. And you also really clearly see from this angle how his shoulders are rotated substantially more than his hips uh, to really load and stretch his midsection to then build energy and use it to unwind forward towards the ball. The last thing that I'd like to point out here before we move on is what he's doing with his hands. And this is a great angle to look at that. From his initial setup and, and ready position, you'll see that his hands come up a little bit to raise the racket head, but not a whole lot. From his ready position, his dominant hand is right about waist height. And at the top of his setup, his dominant hand is about chest height. So there is, there is a, a lifting of the racket, and we'll talk about what that leads to in a second, but it's not as much as a lot of players think. It's not a huge loop. There is some upward lift of the hands, and then they'll drop again in a second, but it's not a big, gigantic, like exaggerated loop like a lot of players think that they need in order to create acceleration and momentum with the swing. So uh, let's move forward, and we'll, we'll go back to the first angle that we looked at. And the next element of his swing we're going to check out is the drop of his racket. And what I'd like, really like to point out here and emphasize is how initially, how he, when he takes the racket back, his strings are open, they're facing upwards. As the racket starts to drop down into what people frequently refer to as the slot position, his racket face squares up. And so now his racket face is flat, it's perpendicular to the court surface. You can really see that here in this angle. He starts with his racket open, Sampras did this, and a lot of the great one-handed backhand players uh, have all done this as well. Uh, start with an open racket face, and then as the racket drops is when the racket squares up and gets flat. And this is the position that the racket's actually going to be in when it meets the ball. So it's really critical that it gets to that position well before the racket gets pulled forward to the ball. Because if it's still open at all, as you start to swing forwards, it becomes really, really tough to try to turn it just the right amount at just the right time to get the, the racket face at just the right angle at contact. This is a problem I personally have 
have had for years with my one-handed backhand is something I'd, I would love to work on if I ever have time to work on my own game again. But starting open and holding it too long and then trying to kind of flip it as you hit is a big mistake that I frequently see with amateur players and uh, something that, that'll lead to uh, not the topspin that players uh, think it will and makes timing extremely difficult. And so let's also take a look at our final angle here. So you can see the, the open racket face initially, and right here, everything is squared up, and the racket is perpendicular to the court surface. Okay, so moving forwards, this is a great angle to check this out. Let's go forward to the point of contact, and you'll see that his racket, in all three cases, has dropped below the point of contact to come up to the ball to lift it and give it rotation. At the point of contact, we'll see his racket is right at perpendicular, maybe a couple of degrees closed, but if at all, very, very little. And that's gonna be the case for the vast majority of baseline shots. If Roger was well inside the baseline and making contact, let's say at, at shoulder height or chest height, maybe we'd start to see the racket face a little bit more closed. But from the baseline, most of the time, it's gonna be basically dead straight, perpendicular. Uh, other main things to look at are how he's extended his arm out towards the ball, which makes a really nice, strong, solid position. A lot of stability there between his hand and his body. And I'd also like to point out, finally, how his shoulders have now caught up with his hips. So initially, his shoulders were rotated back beyond where his hips were turned. Now that he's rotated forwards to the point of contact, his shoulders have caught up to the angle that his hips are in, and that means he's unwound into the point of contact, and that's a big reason why he looks so smooth and relaxed and effortless as, as he hits his backhand. If that's something that you'd like to look like, then I uh, highly recommend uh, practicing that and copying that. Uh, by the way, if, if you'd like a step-by-step -step plan to follow to emulate this, you can go to backhandactionplan.com and put in your email address, we'll send you a step-by-step -step plan to follow to, to look more like this. Let's check out these other angles as well. So flat racket face already, coming forward to contact. There's the point of contact, the extended arm. You can also see from this angle, the shoulders and the hips are in alignment now. They're facing the same directions. His shoulders have caught up to his hips. And let's take a look at this final angle. From this angle, his racket looks a little bit more closed. If you could see the same amount of detail, maybe we can zoom in on this. Uh, I'm not sure, uh, later on, but you can see that he made contact a little bit below the, the center of his racket face, which is tilting his racket face forwards a little bit. But the same as the other uh, swings, he's nice and extended and stable, locked out with his arm, and his shoulders and his hips are in the same uh, position. They're facing the same way. Okay, now let's go ahead and move forward to follow through, and this is really key. What the follow through really should be is the natural continuation of the momentum that we've built up until the point of contact. Leading up to contact, Roger made a big coil, a big turn. He dropped the racket to get it down below contact. Everything started uncoiling and uh, unraveling towards the point of contact and rotating up towards the ball. And now the body wants to continue in that direction and the racket wants to continue in that direction. So looking from, from this angle here, you'll see how his, here's his initial uh, turn setup position. Watch the amount of turn he makes going into contact. And so here, if his body's relaxed, it's just gonna continue to unwind. And his racket also, starting from a loaded position here with the butt cap going towards the point of contact. There's a turn and a rotation as his shoulder and his forearm externally rotate, and then they want to continue doing that. And that's exactly what happens. And so his chest will continue to turn forwards. His arm and his shoulder will continue to lift. And so a good follow through really is just a natural result of what happened up until the point of contact. And we'll see that in the other clips as well. Here's contact from the right side. See how there's kind of a, a rainbow or a, an arced path here of the tip of the racket, starting from contact and then releasing over to Roger's right side. 
And this is a little bit more aggressive swing than the first one. You'll see how his arm really extends and kind of draws and pulls his body open as he continues to follow through. And that's going to be the case for, for this swing as well. A little bit more kind of real life full speed. The one looking straight ahead, Roger was just kind of warming up and smooth and relaxed. These are our point play. And so you'll see how this is a much more aggressive swing and his arm and shoulder really extend and reach out to the right, which leads his body to continue opening towards the other side of the court. So if you execute all these things, you're going to have a killer backhand. The, the initial load, strong contact point, unwinding of the body, and then from contact, continuing to allow your body to flow smoothly and relaxed. If you do all those things, you're going to have a great backhand. If you'd like a step-by-step -step program to follow to help you emulate this and have a stronger backhand, go to backhandactionplan.com, or you can click the link in the description down below. And also, if you enjoyed this video, please do me a favor, click like and subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss out on future coaching videos. Let me know if you have any uh, comments or questions down below, and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video.